Work for New is a Canadian-based agriculture tech company attempting to revolutionize crop fertilization through a patented and sustainable thermal treatment of livestock manure. Eliminating all potential pathogens without charring or burning, the processed livestock manure is combined with environmentally friendly additives for a proprietary blend which is easier to store, spread, and maintain while increasing yields from 20 to 40% versus conventional chemical fertilization. If the science around crop cultivation is a mystery to you, you are in the right place. Hi, I'm Maddie Grace, and this is Five Easy Questions, where we break down the market in simple terms for the new investor. Today, I'm speaking with Keith Driver, CEO and Director of Earth Renew. Thank you so much for joining us today, Keith. Thanks for having me, Maddie. Okay, I'm just going to jump right into the questions. So number one, what are the methods and products used in conventional chemical crop fertilization? Wow. So there are lots of uh, crop inputs that are used. The, the difference between, say, the traditional conventional agriculture is that they provide nutrients to feed the plant. So there's sprays and there's all sorts of potions and lotions that are put on uh, throughout the crop cycle. In regenerative and organic ag, we feed the soil to feed the plant. So we're talking about putting carbon back into the soil. We're talking about putting nutrients back in the soil. We're trying about building the microbial community in the soil so that the plants can grow more naturally and sustainably. Amazing. That was, that was very succinct. All right, what is Earth Renew's treatment process? So we do a couple things. So we take undervalued organic materials, whether it be uh, livestock manures or, or other organic streams from the food mm -hmm. processing space, and we treat them using the waste heat. So the spare heat left over from electricity production, okay. and we use that to dry the material. Once we have that material, we then combine in all of the naturally sourced uh, ingredients that make up a whole fertilizer solution. So we don't sell ingredients to farmers, we sell them pelleted solutions where they can store them, they can apply them as they're applying the, uh, putting the seeds in the ground and that lasts throughout the season and build the soil as opposed to just spraying and praying that the crop will grow. Great, all right. Why are we facing a potential food shortage globally by 2050? It's a people problem. You've got going from Always. seven to 10 billion people. Um, the part of that that people don't necessarily recognize is that that's going to require 70% more food. People are moving up the food chain. More people want to eat chicken, more people to find ways to feed the things, to feed the chickens, and so forth, it grows. To put it in context, we need to find a land area, productive land area, the size of the country of Brazil to be able to grow enough crops to feed the world. And last I checked, you know, world's round, there's nowhere else to find. We don't have that. So we have to build back those soils. So even with things like plant-based proteins, you need to grow those peas and other legumes to be able to make those proteins. But every acre of that that goes into production, there's an acre of wheat or canola or something else that's not grown. And so we've got to find a way to build back the soils to make them more productive so that we can feed a growing planet. All right. What is a circular economy and why is it so important? Wow, um, that's, that's big <laughs> questions for early in the morning. So a circular Monday economy morning. is the art of finding byproducts from one industry that you can upcycle and turn into feedstocks for another. So that eventually you've got this cycle where the nutrients from producing, you know, in our case, we're on a cattle feedlot. So the manures from the cattle, uh, we gather them up, we dry them, we turn them into high value organic fertilizers that go into growing crops and those crops feed people and those, you know, in theory, those nutrients just cycle their way around. And so it's a, it's a zero sum game. There's only so many nutrients and so much um, material we can produce off the land. And mm -hmm. so by putting the nutrients back in the land where they're productive and not considered as pollutants or runoff from large area feedlots, you end up creating this circular trend which spirals up as opposed to a circle of pollution, which would cycle down and, and cause a, a, you know, a challenge. Great, and that's, that's what we're in now, correct? The cycle. Unfortunately, <laughs> the cycle has not been good. So farming is essentially right. mining the soil. And so over generations to push more productivity, we've thrown more chemicals at it, we've mined the soils and the soils are actually depleting in their ability to be productive. So it's like a treadmill. You got to put more chemical fertilizer in and more other inputs in to make that happen. And we've right. spiraled our way into a point where now this movement towards regenerative agriculture is really infectious because 
farmers want to be good stewards of their their land and by giving them the tools to do so they're cycling up they're they're making their farms more productive which make them more sustainable which make them more profitable which will incent farmers to continue to produce the food that we all need oh my gosh that was that was a big question I didn't even realize when I asked it. Um, what are Earth Renew's environmental, social, and corporate governance criteria? Sure. So by default, we have this sort of environmental mode. I have two degrees in environmental engineering and an MBA in environmental management. So um, you slice me and I bleed green. But mm -hmm. what we've done is we, we use that as a means of identifying the feedstocks that we would use. So we take waste heat, so a, a heat that was otherwise being dissipated to the atmosphere. We take a waste product, the manure from the feedlot, we put the two together and we come out with a productive natural fertilizer that doesn't leach. So you don't end up with runoff into waterways and phosphorus blooms and all those sorts of challenges. So from an environmental perspective, that's key. From a social perspective, when we think about the farm and it moving generation to generation, as the generations grow, the land has got to be more productive so that it can support the next generation of, of, of farmers. So if there's a family that's a farmer and there's two kids, well, that farm's got to be able to support the two families and, and so on and so forth down the chain. And eventually you have to find higher value. So the more valuable and productive we make these farms, the greater and stronger those communities can become and those families can remain close. It's a way of life. Uh, and you, you don't have that bleed to urbanization. From a governance perspective, we're a publicly traded company. Uh, we've put all those processes in place. We're uh, looking for gender parity on the board. Um, we're headed in those directions. Um, and and I, 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 it's hard to talk about that because that's just sort of the, the way we've approached it. I've, I've taken my governance course through the University of Calgary so that I could put these processes in place. I just wouldn't know otherwise, but there's a real heavy on the ESG side. I'd say we're super heavy on the E. There's a byproduct of this social benefit that comes from making farms more productive. Mm -hmm. And inherently as a company, we've committed ourselves to strong governance to make sure that we build in a diversity of opinions, but also make our company resilient for an evolving economy. Ugh. These, these types of things are so reassuring to me. And I feel like my whole young up and coming sort of generation because we're like, is someone up there doing something to help? So this is amazing. I love your company <laughs> as a side note. Okay. Now I just have a really quick little rapid fire round for you. Okay. Yeah. Ready? Yep. All ready. Okay. <laughs> Tea or coffee? Neither. No hot beverages. <gasps> oh my God. I got a, I got a delicate palate. <laughs> what is the first thing you do in the morning? Check my email. What is your favorite sport to watch? To watch. I grew up playing ultimate frisbee competitively. I actually went to worlds three times. Oh, so my nice. favorite sport is when I get the chance to watch a tournament final. And uh, I know it's, it's a niche thing, but uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, so I assume that answers my next question. What is your favorite sport, sport to play? No. So I love no. playing ultimate frisbee. I did that for a long time. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was a boxer. And I loved everything about boxing except getting punched in the head. Yeah, and, that's how uh, I would feel too. Yeah. So I have a <laughs> massive belt at home from this championship that I won. And it was a, it's a huge moment of pride for me. And then I turned 40 and my last fight, someone uh, uh, punctured a rib, uh, broke a rib, punctured a lung. And uh, I haven't been in the ring since. So I miss it the most. Oh, wow. Uh, cat or dog? Grew up with cats, mm. fearing them. I love dogs, <laughs> but I am so busy. I make yeah. myself so busy that uh, if you want to go to yoga at six in the morning and you got a dog, there's a, there's no way to do it. So do uh, it. fishy and uh, literally a fish named fishy. <laughs> oh, that, that's great. Innovative. <laughs> um, favorite book. Oh my goodness. A prayer for Owen Meany. Oh, wow. um, I read it when I was a kid and it's a story for those who don't know, John Irving wrote it. And for me, it's a story of a boy who goes his entire life as being sort of special needs and, and a bit different and everything in his life prepares him for one golden moment where he realizes that all of his talents are what's going to, you know, save the world or, or whatever. And it, it was that sort of inspiring to me of, 
yeah, you're a bit weird as an entrepreneur, you tend to be, but, um, at some point, all of those skills, like my engineering and my MBA and all that, all of a sudden comes together and you're like, oh my gosh, like, it's like, this is the moment, right? The, the, the loud music plays in the background of the movie and all of a sudden the hero comes forward and ta-da. And that's, uh, that was my book, uh, growing up as a teenager. Oh, yeah. oh, that was beautiful. That was a great answer. Okay. Uh, oh, value investor or day trader? A value investor. I've almost exclusively been a private uh, equity investor until quite recently. And I just can't get over the fundamental view of, of what makes a good company and mm-hmm. what makes a company that I'm happy to be associated with. Mm-hmm. So um, I see it for me, particularly because a lot of my investments and all that have to be disclosed, is mm-hmm. that it's reputational to me. So why would I look at a company that goes against my values when mm-hmm. there's so many good companies that are um, that speak to me and and I get some value out of associating myself and my dollars with? So for me, it's definitely uh, long-term value investing. Value investor, uh, suit and tie or casual. <laughs> Um, I, I don't own a suit. I, I own a number of sports jackets. I have never, well, I shouldn't say I've never worn a tie. I've never willingly worn a tie. Right. Um, I wear uh, steel toe boots every day because I never know if I'm going to be out at the plant or in the field. Mm. And if given my druthers, I, I follow the Barack Obama's um, plan for dressing, which is you have one set of jeans which I have, I have five pairs of the exact same jeans and then a, a rotation of golf shirts and dress shirts. I dressed up nice for you today, but uh, <laughs> so, dress, I love it. so you would know me because I looks like I recycle the same clothes every day, but I just have a closet full of the same things. So it's when I wake same. up in the morning, I don't have to make any decisions and this is as good as it gets every day. And I take it on, take on the world. I love that. I think that's brilliant. One of my favorite writers, Fran Lebowitz does the same thing. You probably have matching clothes. She wears like all men's clothes. It's amazing. Um, if you had a thousand- I'm going to look that up afterwards to sign out if that was a compliment or a it, subtle it dig. <laughs> oh, she is my idol. I promise you it is. Um, if you had $1,000 to invest, what company would it be not your own? What company would it be? <laughs> um, there's a really cool water lentil company um, in Vancouver called, uh, they trade under the symbol Hulk, H-U-L-K. And I've watched them since they started as a Kickstarter and there was, yeah, I think it was Kickstarter or GoFundMe or some one of those. I've watched them all the way through and I'm just like in awe of what they've, what they've done. And I got to meet them like when they didn't have two pennies to rub together mm-hmm. and uh, they built this really interesting story where they're just so driven. And I just think that's probably where I'd put my, put my money. It's called Pontus. Uh, uh, yeah. H-U-L-K is a symbol. Is you okay? Awesome. And last one, what was the last movie you watched? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, so uh, we're in the dark days of COVID and yes. uh, there's a 1991 Bruce Willis film called oh. uh, Hudson Hawk. And it, <laughs> it is marginally passable, <laughs> but so fun to watch having not seen it in almost 30 years and to see a Bruce Willis, like I, I've, I've thought quite highly of Bruce Willis as right. an individual as, 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 and to see him 30 years ago, it was just the perfect thing to do on a Thursday night when <laughs> just that was what I needed. It was just like right place, right time. And Bruce Willis, uh, you know, I say he doesn't disappoint, but he didn't disappoint 30 years ago now that I watched it now. Right. Oh, that's, I've never seen it, but I can see, Galen, my coworker in the corner, who won't be in this video, laughing his head off. He he approves of this message. <laughs> I, I don't endorse the movie, I, but it is worth. Like when you when you find it, like I have no idea what to do. Like just think of that, and it'll be, it'll it'll good scratch your head for me. We yeah. all need good movie good movie regs. Okay, yeah. that is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining us, um, and pleasure. hopefully we get to talk to you again in the future and hear more about your amazing company. Thanks very much. Have a great day. (laughs) Thank you.